In today's note, we are going to, again, look at distance and time graphs. So again, just to kind of summarize the investigation you did on Desmos. So looking at this first graph, a canoeist st starts from a dock and paddles to the end of a lake and back. This, this graph shows the canoeist distance from the dock during the trip. So this overall shape or overall graph is showing the canoeist distance as they leave from the dock, goes to the end of the lake, and they come back. So again, just to kind of help us, we have distance in kilometers, we have time in hours. If we want to again think about it, again, distance is dependent because it's on the Y. Time is independent. So again, it is helpful to kind of remember to stick with these terms because we do come up with them or we do talk about them um, multiple times. So first thing we want to do is how long did this trip take? Well, looking at the graph, we know if we start here, this is our start, and here is our finish. Right? If this graph represents her entire trip, or, or their entire trip, we start at here, we end here, time is in hours, so we see at the end, it takes four hours. So this entire trip takes four hours. How far is it to the end of the lake? Again, if this is representing her trip, she starts, she paddles out until she hits a certain point, and then we see the distance starts to decrease. So if we're thinking about this in terms of the context, she's paddling to the end of the lake and back. So that means that the farthest distance she travels away from the dock Right, because this, if this is our dock here, then the farthest distance she travels away has to be the end of the lake. Because after that, she turns around and heads back to the dock. So that means that this farthest distance has to be the end of the lake. So how far is it to the end of the lake? Well, we can see that the highest point or the farthest distance is six kilometers. So the lake, or it's six kilometers to the end of the lake. What does the flat portion of the graph represent? So the flat portion of our graph is this top part right here. And it's a flat line. And we've talked a bit before about slopes of horizontal lines. The slope of this line equals zero. And you can think about, okay, well, what would a slope of zero represent in this scenario? And if we look back to distance and time as our two variables, because the slope is zero, that means the distance is not changing based on the time or hours that she spent there. So she's staying in one spot, essentially, because her distance isn't changing. So there's a couple things you could say. You could say she's not moving. You could say stopped, you say zero kilometers per one hour, right? Because if we look at the time, we go from two to three hours. So you could say that she hasn't moved in one hour. Or based on the kilometers per one hour, this might trigger something that you think about before. Zero kilometers per hour is her speed. So she's not moving. And it all kind of goes back into what we talked about. Not moving, stopped, zero kilometers per hour, or her speed is zero kilometers per hour. D wants to know, is she traveling, or are they traveling faster on the way out or on the way back? And we want to calculate the speed of each section to support our answer. So just as a quick review, speed, or you could think velocity, is equal to distance over time. And right? you think of uh, stop signs or uh, speed signs, it's always like kilometers per hour. Um, you can think of speed as like meters per second, anything like that where we have a distance over a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have label my three sections here because I have basically three different scenarios. A, where they're leaving. B, we've already talked about we're not moving. And the last one, C, 
where they're coming back or on the way in. So if I'm going to do the speed for the first one, for A, speed is equal, I need to know how far did they travel. Looking at the graph, we can see they started at zero and they went to six. So essentially I'm trying to find the slope of that line. So zero to six, distance was six kilometers. Over the time, how long did it take them? Starting at zero and going to two hours. So it took me two hours to go six kilometers. I can simplify this to basically three kilometers an hour. I already know the flat portion is zero. They travel zero kilometers in one hour. For portion C, going from here to here, basically again I'm trying to find the slope of this line. How far did they travel? Well it goes from six back down to zero. So the speed for the second one is six kilometers. We could say it's negative because we're decreasing. And then the time from three to four is only one hour. So be careful with that. Don't just assume, well, it goes to four, so that's four hours. You're looking at just the portion of this line. And in this case, it's only from three to four. So that's only one hour. In this case, we have negative six kilometers per hour. Now, you may be thinking, well, negative six kilometers an hour. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a, uh, a speed sign that had negative kilometers an hour. And that's true because what this means is that it's six kilometers per hour on the way back. So when you're finding your speed, right, you want to make sure that yes, you may get a negative, but keep in mind you have to rewrite that without the negative because we don't have such a thing as negative speed. So when dealing with speed, we do not have negative values or basically negative speed. The negative indicates the direction you are traveling. If it's positive, moving away, negative, moving towards. And that positive and negative will be uh, moving towards or away from whatever your reference point is. In this case, we start at a dock and we're or canoeing away. So we're moving in a positive direction away. Negative, we're coming back towards the dock. In the next part, we are going to be looking at, again, the same idea, and we're going to try to figure out the distance traveled, the time, the speed, and the direction. So we're going to be using this with this graph. So we're going to have to break this down into sections. So I'll color code it. Our first section is this graph here. So this will be section A. Then we'll have section B, this flat line, section C, and section D. So for section A, looking at it, we want to know how far did we travel. So we look at the start, from the start to the end, of this section, we go from zero to one. So in this case, our distance traveled is one kilometer. For the time, again, we look from the start to the end. We go from zero to 30. So in this case, it's 30 minutes or 0 0.5 hours. If we want to keep this in kilometers per hours or kilometers per minute, depending on which one. Speed, again, speed is distance over time. So in this case, distance is one kilometer over and then again, depending on what you want to put it at. 
where you could do one kilometer um, over 30 minutes or you could do one kilometer over 0 0.5 hours again depending on what you want your units to be in I'm gonna stick with the kilometers per hour only because that's something that we're kind of used to I mean that's kind of the more common term so one kilometer per 0 0.5 hours equals two kilometers an hour the direction well if we're looking at our direction it tends to be in the positive direction so we are moving away so we're moving away from the start So we're moving away from the starting point. For B, B again, now we're, now we're into another section, so we're not going to use um, the zero as a reference. We're going to use the starting point of this section. So this one starts at a distance of 1 and ends at a distance of 1. Right? Distance is the vertical, so we're looking at the Y values. We stay at 1 the entire time. So in this case, the distance traveled is zero kilometers the time again for time we're looking at the start and the end so in this case it is 20 minutes or you could say one-third of an hour so our speed distance over time is equal to zero kilometers divided by 0 0.33 hours Either way, it doesn't matter if you use the fraction or the decimal because our distance traveled is zero, so our speed is zero kilometers per hour. We haven't moved anywhere. Our direction, in this case, there is no direction because we are stopped. C, again, we're moving on to a new section, so I'm going to use the beginning of the section and the end of my section as a reference. So in this case, I went from one kilometer away to four kilometers away, so the total distance traveled is three kilometers. The time it took me, again, I'm looking at the beginning and the end of this section, not the overall. So I go from 50 to 60, which is 10 minutes which is one-sixth of an hour. So when I do my speed or distance over time, I get three kilometers divided by one over six hours, which just basically works out to, if I'm dealing with fractions, three times six over one, which equals 18 kilometers per hour. Or if you used your calculator, you get something similar. In this case, the direction, I'm again moving away because it's going in the positive direction, or if you think of it, I'm going away from something. Moving away. Finally, for D, D, I'm heading back down, so I'm looking at the distance traveled in this case, so I go from four to zero, so I'm traveling four kilometers. If you're including the negative, you have to make sure that when you go and do speed or do the speed calculation, you're not including the negative because we're talking of, or the speed doesn't have negatives, right? That negative refers to the direction. Looking at time, again, look at the beginning of the section and look at the end of the section. So we go from 60 minutes to 80 minutes. So in this case, it's 20 minutes of our trip or again one-third of an hour so when we do our speed calculation four kilometers divided by one-third of an hour equals four times three over one we get 12 kilometers per hour so that is our speed for this section and direction again because it's moving closer we have a negative slope we are moving towards. So if you got that there was a negative distance traveled because we're moving back towards zero, 
or back towards our reference. Make sure you don't include it in the speed calculation because we don't have such a thing as negative speed and you use that negative to help with the direction because in this case we're moving towards. So again that was just a quick review um, or summary of looking at distance time graphs. Um, so again read the situation carefully and make sure you understand what it's representing, what your reference point is, where you're talking or where you're starting from. Remember any positive slope is moving away, any flat or horizontal slope is stopped, and any negative slope means you're moving towards. Um, so again, just be careful with your graph. Make sure for each section you are looking at that section only. You're not using, um, you're not comparing it to the overall. Thank you.